Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. Welcome back to the bench. As you can see, I have owned quite a number of audio interfaces throughout the years. This is my daily driver. This is a Native Instruments Complete Audio 6. This is a classic. This is one of the first cheap and readily available USB interfaces with multiple channels. This is the M Audio Fast Track Pro. I don't think the microphone inputs work, but I have set up the rear outputs to be DC coupled. So this is nice if I'm playing with the oscilloscope and I need DC offset. And my latest interface is a Steinberg UR44C. It has four microphone inputs on the front, doubling the input capability. Four microphones is usually all you need to record drums. However, this interface does have two additional inputs on the back, which are line inputs, so they can't be used without some additional preamplification. So I thought today would be a great day to build a microphone preamplifier so that we can take advantage of all of the inputs on this interface and make some really nice multi-channel drum tracks. The preamp we are going to be building today consists of a circuit board by ESP or Elliott Sound Projects and they are an electronics designer and PCB manufacturer out in Australia. So I bought two of these boards. It consists of a dual mic preamp and a power supply and i think we're going to try and fit it into this enclosure this is a hammond's 1590x these are combination xlr quarter inch jacks uh, which was all i could find so we will need to fit them somewhere in like that and then we also have to fit in two potentiometers for gain control i think we might try and have those coming out the top and then we will take two quarter inch jacks and these will be the outputs after a little bit of fiddling around, I think I found a layout I like. We'll put our main board right here in the center, our two XLR jacks on the front, and next to each jack we'll have a potentiometer. Behind that, we will have the power inlet jack, and then on the back, we will have the two quarter inch jacks. So I'm gonna mark these rough positioned in Sharpie, and then I will come back with calipers and make sure that everything is exactly dimensioned and evenly spaced. So in terms of actual electronics, there's nothing too terribly exotic going on here. Obviously we have the XLR jacks, and then the rarest part, of course, is this reverse logarithmic taper potentiometer, the C10K. That indicates a reverse log taper, um, sometimes called anti-log. Other than that, um, pretty basic, but as usual, we need a bunch of different values of passives like resistors and diodes, so I picked up some nice... Uh, 1% tolerance metal film resistors for this project because I think that'll make the noise floor a little bit lower. So let's start by installing a bunch of these low profile passives like the resistors and diodes and I've got my handy dandy printed parts layout here so it should be a breeze. <laughs> Time to move on to the power board, and I think we're going to start with these big old 1 watt 10 ohm resistors. Mondo Electrolytics. The issue is, of course, these are larger than the one specified, so they don't exactly fit as designed. But I think we can still make this work. We're just going to have to be a little bit pushy and bend the leads into place. We can just lean them all a little bit away from each other. They'll overlap the passive components, but that doesn't really matter. They're not supposed to be right on top of the board anyway. Uh, I think the last component we need to fit is the voltage regulators. All right, that is the power supply board all done. We just have to do a little bit of off-board wiring with this. Let's finish up the preamp board. The final components we need to install on this board are, of course, the transistors. And uh, as luck would have it, uh, some of them are no longer in production. We need some BC549, and I happen to have three of them from another project, but we need four for this project. In the bill of materials, we're supposed to use these 2N4403s, but if we look at the parts layout that we have here, you can see that these are clearly marked as BC559. And if we look at the data sheet, the pinouts are reversed. So I went to the schematic and we can really just look over here at the transistors. We can see that BC559 is a PNP. We don't have to worry about what the silkscreen says. We can just wire 
the emitter of Q101 and the collector of Q102 to whatever pin is shorted together. And if we have a look at the PCB, I don't, you probably can't tell this, but these outermost two pins are directly shorted together. It is the next day, I have slept on it, I have had some coffee, I reviewed the schematic, I reviewed the data sheets and looked at these. We need to install all these transistors backwards from the way the footprints are indicated. I think that about does it. The only thing remaining to install is this op amp chip. All we need to do is the offboard wiring, but in order to do that we need some components to wire things to. So let's put some holes in the enclosure and affix some components. <laughs> I've been playing with the layout of these PCBs and I think I've got a pretty good idea where they're going to go. Uh, this orientation should shorten all of the cable runs so that the output goes direct to the output, the input to the input. Now we need to affix these PCBs where they're going to go and for that I want to use these standoffs. Um, of course these don't screw directly in then we will just epoxy them in place with some JV weld. got 7.6 volts and minus 7.6 volts a little lower than I wanted this is a 12 volt AC plug pack so perhaps if I swap that out it'll be okay there's also a, a voltage setting resistor in here that I could swap out Desoldering stuff, definitely my least favorite task in the electronics. The ergonomics of it are a real pain because you have to have the iron on one side of the board and the desoldering thing on the other side, so you're kind of like moving your head around to try and be able to see. I spent a while troubleshooting this and was really getting nowhere with it, so I went and posted on the ESP Sound forums. They suggested that maybe I had hooked up the power input wrong, so I swapped over this input from AC1 and AC2, which is what I assumed, but actually goes to AC2 and ground, and when we connect it that way, we get. 12 volts, bang on the money. So that is a major improvement. I'm very happy about that. And I think we are ready to actually put this thing together now. All right, it is time for my least favorite part of every project. And that is offboard wiring. I'm not very good at it, so I'm not gonna show off. Hopefully the result looks okay, but more importantly, hopefully it works.
Bastard. Now it is no more. Right, so after some trials and tribulations, this mic preamp is finally working on both channels. And it sounds pretty good to me. The noise is relatively low. This is an MD441, which is a pretty low output microphone. And it's going right into the input of this, into my sound card over on the desk. So I think the logical next thing to do is to hook up two mics and give this a musical test. Well, that was certainly different. I think this mic preamp performed pretty well. It has plenty of gain for recording vocals or guitars, and the sound is nice and low noise. It has a clean, transparent sound, which is what you would expect from a transistor amplifier with no frills. I have noticed that this preamp is a little bit more sensitive to RFI, or radio frequency interference, than the mic pre's in my interface or in my mixer. And I'm not really sure what the reason for that is. It could be the AC power supply. However, I have noticed that the grounding system employed on the PCB is a little bit unorthodox. It involves a lot of flying leads to each component. Um, and when I had it wired up that way, the AM interference was uh, a little bit more noticeable. So I cut those wires uh, and made sure that all the grounds come from the two metal jacks on the back. And that the XLR cable, um, the shield, is grounded to the jack and to the case, but not to the PCB directly. This seems to have reduced the noise considerably. Uh, but overall, in terms of this project as a DIY effort, the documentation online with the schematics and the explanation of the component selection is pretty good. But in terms of actually building it into an enclosure, it's all the details are left to the end user. Uh, I suppose that may be part of the appeal because you could build this into a mixer, you could build this into some other system that just needs a couple of mic preamps as a part of a larger device. But in terms of building as a standalone project, there are probably easier ways to get started. Uh, one thing I did was look into commercially available mic preamps. Probably the closest thing is the Art Pro MPA2, I think it's called. Uh, very similar form factor. I think it might have a vacuum tube in it. Behringer makes a pretty similar model. Um, I think DBX made something kind of similar. One product I did find while I was searching for alternatives to this is the M-Audio Audio Buddy which is a two-channel combination mic preamp DI box. Looks very handy. I don't know how high quality it was, but they seem to have made a bunch of them. Uh, and they're very easy to find for something like 20 to 40 to $50, uh, which I think would be probably the easiest way if you're looking for a device like this is to just 
pick one of those up because they're so readily available. I'm a fairly experienced electronics builder. I've designed my own electronics, but I'm not that much of an expert in analog design. Uh, and I found myself scratching my head quite a bit while building this. The, the instructions are fairly clear in terms of the design, but in terms of the actual wiring and layout, they leave something to be desired. Nonetheless, I'm very satisfied with this build. I think it's going to perform really well when I'm making up lots of drums, and I'm looking forward to getting back into the studio to use this. Before I sign off, I want to say a huge thank you and shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. Thank you very much for your support. You make these videos possible. And if you're interested in getting early access to all of my new videos, as well as a little bit of bonus content, head on over to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. Well, I think that about does it. I hope my trials and tribulations with this project have been as educational for you as they have been for me. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.